Good fucking morning, guys. Happy New Year's. Today's it. First day of 2019. Um, I wanted to do a quick Q&A. Some of you guys asked some questions, and then I'll see what's on deck. Is it we're going to make the organization video on how to do the calls, how to set it up? Um, should I do the long proposal video? You know, what I exactly send um, to make the close? Or um, I might even do the my my goals video, right? That's that's something usually I do a couple of days before the New Year's hit. Um, but this year I didn't fi even finish writing out my goals yet. So I want to make a video on that as well. And um, yeah, so let's get into it. First of all, let me just go through some questions. All right. Okay. What if I don't know the owner's name? Okay, this is for the calling video, right? Obviously. Hey, what's up, guys? All right. Okay, so this is where I, I this is why I'm gonna make the organization video, right? Like to show you guys how I set it up, and if there are some if this then that into it built in, meaning that okay, if you find the owner's name right away, then you know obviously use it. If if you're already in a conversation and you can't see it anywhere, then just go with the company's name. There is something to it. Like for example, if I okay, if I do plumber New York, New I right, and I'm gonna call the people from Home Advisor, let's say right. I'm gonna call these guys and I'm calling this list. I wanna go down. The thing I'm prioritizing the most is speed. Speed, like the number of dials, right? That's that's my prior priority. Just so you understand, this is where it makes a huge difference, I think, in these kind of stuff. Like, um, I'm not saying this is the only way to do it, guys. There is people who prioritize a lot on who you're calling, and that can be great, right? If you go and research, have a VA, find out exactly the companies that here um, are, are aligning with you, you know, like you know the names, the company name, how long they've been in business, their employees, their, all that stuff. That's great. That's very valuable information. The way I do it is speed. I just sift through. That's why I use two phones. Okay, I sift through calling them and that's my filtration, right? Because I can very, at a very fast rate, I can go through and find out who will be interested, right? Um, okay, so for example, I'm calling these companies. Let's say I come across Lopez. Like Lopez, I can know that it, the name is Lopez. I'll just take a blind shot at that, okay? ASAP Solutions, if I'm calling, I'll just start with, hey, is this ASAP Solutions? And they'll be like, yes, blah, blah, who is this? Can I help you? Like, hey, this is shit. And I get, get into it. Now, if the if somebody picks up and I can tell right from the hello that it's the owner, right? Most of these companies, it's not gonna be the owner who picks up. It's gonna be the receptionist, other things, and a lot of them are not gonna just even pick up. Like the vast majority of calls you make is people who don't pick up, right? Like if there's a way for me to um, call, like like you know, like have that kind of dialer I heard about before, but I never got to find out how it works, is like it dials it for you and only puts you in front of the companies that actually picked up by a human voice that would shorten like you know like speed things up even a lot more but anyways as soon as somebody picks up it buys me around 10 seconds to find a name now it might sound like this is hectic but it once you get in the um, mood of calling in a few days you'll be able to do this as soon as somebody says hello you have about 10 seconds to find out their name okay and that's how how, how you do it okay let me just say it. Hey, is this ASAP Solutions? They're like, yes, how am I help you? I'm like, hey, this is SHIB. Then there's a pause. Right there, it's like about five seconds at least, right? While that part of the conversation is going, as soon as they said hello in the beginning, I would open the reviews. Hey, this is SHIB. Waiting for them to answer and stuff, I would go down and try to see and if I can find a name. Here, I've hired Mr. Felix. He's like, is this SHIB? He's paused, he's not saying anything. This is Mr. Felix, right? Hey, look, I called you. Like, you will be like, yes, because I got, I nailed his name right there. So it's a little, there is a, now I realize there is a bunch of stuff that's like, you know, if, if this, then that kind of happened while you're getting in the groove of calling. Um, and I guess I got pretty good at it as time went, right? To pick up little things. That's just the name. I, I do pick up uh, lots of other stuff um, as the call goes forward. So the more they talk, the more I would, possibly get into stuff, right? Like after the initial email, like that's my main thing, right? To get the email. But if the person does talk more, then I would go on. After I got their email and stuff like that, and then if they wanna ask a bit more stuff, I would keep on going, right? The whole thing about the email guys is this. Most people, when you talk to them, right? You convince them that you could be a potential customer because you you know, say, hey, this is a ship, and then they went with it. 
And then later, halfway down the line, like right after that, they found out that, oh, it's not a customer, it's some other guy. Now they're thinking how to get out of the call. Understand this. This is something I should have put in the last video, but this is critical. This is what, where their intention is, 100%. They thought you're a customer. Now you're explaining like, hey, we just got you know this many calls for other people. Um, just wanted to get in touch with you. And now they, as you're saying that, they're thinking like, fuck, I thought there was a customer, I should have hung up. Now they want to get out of the call. What I'm doing is giving them a leeway. Hey, just wanted to see if I could send you an email to show you exactly what I'm giving them a leeway. Now, then when they hear that, they're like, oh, fuck, beautiful. I, I'm, I'm, this guy's giving me a chance to get out of this call because most people don't want to be a dick. That's the thing we think wrong. They, most people don't want to say fuck off and hang up because you feel shitty too when you do that, right? Most people don't want to have to do that. Right? They don't want to hang up on your face. They don't want to uh, cuss at you and stuff like that. They, they will take that easy way out by just giving you an email, especially because we are giving them that potential value and then you look forward to it. You know, I mean, they'll look forward to it. Hope that makes sense, right? Anyways, um, I was going to say, oh yeah, okay. So that's still the main part that, you know, I, um, I'm getting their email. But there are going to be people who really feel your vibe and they want to ask more questions and stuff like that. And as that happens, if that happens, I get it more into it. I, I will search their brand name, see if they have a website. I'll do a quick thing and find out. And sometimes I even walk them through it. Like, yeah, I'm seeing right now that you guys have, you know, this many things. That's really great. You know, the people I, some people I work with um, was in that kind of stage and how it differs and blah, blah, blah. You know, maybe I'll open up the, that lead sheet. I, uh, um, the, the sheet to find the, uh, how much they're paying for calls and I'll keep it handy, right? Right next to them. I, I would keep that handy for sure, actually. Um, and somewhere in the conversation, if it advances, I'll bring that up. Oh, I see you guys are paying over ninety dollars right now for home advisor leads. Like, are you guys are you guys tracking if this is, um, you know, like what's your customer acquisition cost? Like, do you track that? I would get into some conversation about that. This is something that normal people don't talk about, right? I can say, hey, we have seen that people in a home advisor, not only are you paying like every five leads, that's like $500, but you also spend more money going to homes because people from home advisor close less. Homeowners call on home advisor because they want to check out not two contractors, but 10. So they say yes less when you get in the houses too. And I found this through my clients when they shipped it over to Google leads, right? So the, I get more into it based on their conversation and it's really like almost impossible to put that on video because it differs from conversation to conversation business to business completely i use my experience of what i know from my industry to make that happen right but my main thing what 90 percent of the calls will turn into because most people even when they are interested or, or they are going to sign up they don't give you that time here they will take that leeway out and your call will end within that, you know, two, three minutes and they'll give you an email and they'll be waiting for the call. I mean, uh, waiting for the email uh, um, with the video, right? And that's it. That's what 90% is. But there is a small percentage which you will, con uh, you can advance the conversation and it'll be a plus and you can use your, you know, depending on how your experience is as you're getting more clients and be able to maneuver through that, right? So I just want to lay that out there. Um, what was the question then? Yeah, so <laughs> if you don't know the owner's name, try to find it by clicking reviews um, because now that you actually you know went through and, and you know got the owner on the phone, but if you can't find it, just go with the company's name. All right, what's the next question? Oh, is there a time of day that works best or is just, okay, it's for a different video. I'll, I'll answer that later. Don't go watch that video. Hey man, good stuff. Really love your videos. Do you think you can do a video on the following? I think you'd make it great. Hey, what's up guys? Hey, what's up? How to price and package your services? Yeah, good question. When starting out, how do you balance doing all the client SEO work while still focusing 70% time on sales? Yeah, that's that's where the um, E comes in entrepreneur. Um, on top of that, how do you systematize and eventually delegate? Man, loaded question, but very good question. Um, obviously, needs his own video. Um, let me pause in for a second.
All right, so I'm gonna screenshot this and I'll have you on my desktop sitting there until I get to it because this is very good question, okay? Like grade A question level shit right here. This will be our own video, how to pr price and package your services. Um, um, how, when you starting, I mean, this is a whole video on like my dynamics of my day, right? Like exactly what I do in the morning um, and the mindset I have behind in the beginning, it is accurate though, like for sure. 70% on is on like doing sales, not just like learning sales and, you know, like understanding sales and stuff like that. Like when you say like, okay, if you say 30% is spent on SEO, it doesn't have to be spent on doing SEO. You could delegate it, right? They could be doing the citation. They could be, people could be doing your on page. That's fine. That 30% doesn't have to account to it, right? That 30% could be accounting to learning SEO, you know, understanding um, other services, how they're doing it, um, learning other uh, SEO concepts and being able to implement it, you know, building systems. All that stuff could be in learning SEO could be put in 30%. But when I say 70% sales is I'm talking about doing the sales, right? Not learning, not anything else. It's actually like, you know, making dials or sending out the emails and stuff like that, right? So I'm going to get into that. That is its own video definitely and then how to systematize and eventually delegate very good question right and i'm going to show you guys a lot of it how to do with fiverr right i i know a lot of the industry shits on fiverr but um i will, I will break that down as well um all right so that's that what's next can i talk about getting five clients five to six jobs for a week when i don't even have a client Ask for proof. What is he talking about? The script, right? Okay. Um, you're talking about this place, right? We are getting close to five to six jobs a week from qualified homeowners. Yeah, so this is something I say because of my client, right? Um, your next best result. You gotta have something, okay? It doesn't have to be as high mark as we put it because we're seos we think that oh if i'm not ranking from you know like new york seo i won't be able to show it right you gotta have something it, it could be even let me pause and think about some good examples all right guys so i will put it that you you want to say at least something like you're getting calls right at least like um you could say, okay, not rankings. I wouldn't say rankings. I could say visibility, right? Like if you have a map listing and, um, you know, like one of the clients you're working with, or if you have no clients, if it's a lead gen site, whatever it is, if you have some kind of like visibility you're getting, like, hey, it's coming to a point right now where we're getting in front of, um, you know, like whatever, two, 20 people per day or something, or 20 people per month, whatever it is, like the visibility, like, you know, the, the search, visibility in your Google My Business Insights, I would say that's like the least um, something you could show, right? So you at least have a listing there. You could, okay, to be real, like you could take out this line, okay? Real quick, because the system is working really well, because we're getting a, you know, three to five X more results than we're getting before. But it, I just haven't done it like that. So honestly, I don't know what the answer is. I know like everybody says like, oh, you don't really need results to show this. You don't need any proof. You don't need any testimonials to make this sale happen. It's, it makes it so much easier that I would say it's uh, that, uh, that statement is false. But is it possible? Yeah. Have I done it before? Yeah, there's been clients I closed who are still with me who I didn't show any results because at that point I wasn't even showing results, right? But how slow was it? It was fucking slow. It was really hard. Like how long did it take me to get my first client? Eight months, right? Um, I wasn't actively trying to get clients because I didn't know the mindset behind how to do sales and stuff like that. I was just like dabbling around and learning more SEO, you know, but whatever it is, um, I would say, you know, pick something, at least some kind of visibility that you have that you can show if it comes to be and they want to see something that you can show that without becoming a liar. <laughs> and then, but other than that, I would recommend having something like, you know, one lead gen site that you can show as a um, testimonial or something like that from the, from the results, right? Like have some kind of proof of concept, even for yourself. Like, how do you know you're going to get them calls, right? Like even for yourself, have that lined up so you can convince yourself and then use that to convince them. 
Um, all right. Can I really good stuff? Do you, okay. How did I? Okay. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Thank you, man. When young after. No idea what this is. Hey, what's up, guys? This guy could be swearing at me. I don't know. When are okay? When you are qualifying or going after a client, do you research their company size or revenue first if they can afford your service, or is that more time consuming and taking away from calls of the day? You nailed it. Um, I go for speed. This is how I've done it. This is how I've done it. Like you have to realize, guys. Like you, you want to be either one or like. Okay, not how do I say this? I don't want to give like misinformation because all I can share is my experience, right? That's, that's what you guys have to understand. There is companies which are very good at prospecting their list. They're, they're targeting people who are highly qualified. And of course that has its place. That, that definitely is very powerful. But if you're a beginner, you're a one man guy, you don't have that much time and you're just trying to tinker all kinds of shit from SEO, from management, from sales, like, the fastest way to get to the money would be just picking up a phone or two phones and burning through lists and just calling them. That's all. That's what I'm saying. And that's what I did. Okay. When I started doing that, that's very soon after that, I started getting clients as time passing right now. I, I tried prospecting a bit. It helped. Like that's why I had the processing video in the beginning. I was even prospecting. I, I told you guys, I was, I was just looking at the cities, I was calling them and I was sending videos. A lot of them, I wasn't even calling them. I was just, they didn't pick up and I would send the videos. It was very inefficient, right? That's why I would say like definitely at least have one layer of filter and I think phone is very good, right? So you gotta balance it out. If you wanna do some kind of like, you know, if you have one VA and they, they're doing a good job at filtering companies out, great, do that. But then call all of them, call all of them hard harder than you'd call these guys because you know that they fit a higher caliber, right? So balance it out, but don't get lost in the whole idea of, you know, picking companies all day and then you only make like, you know, four or five calls a day and then you quit after like the first week. Then you're back to square one. If you have it in your mind that, okay, no matter what happens today, I'm gonna call a hundred businesses and tomorrow I'm gonna call a hundred businesses. And the day after tomorrow, I'm going to call a hundred businesses. If you keep doing that, and you have a set amount of time, like I'm gonna give this like at least 15 days, no matter what happens, next 15 days, this happens whether it's a Sunday or not, you're gonna get clients. That's what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to push you guys to, all right? So that's that. Um, all right, thanks. Actively get clients, get clients using 70% of your time and energy, yep. I have a similar strategy, but it starts with cold email first. Yeah, man, it's that's the strategy to go to, right? Like everybody's doing cold email, and um, you're doing cold call. I mean, I'm I'm saying cold call, right? Obviously, cold email is is is. If you look at the timeline, like you know the thing, like they're gonna we need people who want to receive the video. This is here, and then we're gonna send them the proposal. After the people who are interested, after they seen the video and stuff, you gotta talk with them, whatever. Then you're gonna send the proposal and close. Let's say that's like the like the like the um you know attraction with the video, and then the close is with the whatever it is. Maybe it's a screen share, maybe it's a, a long proposal, which I'm gonna show you guys. That's like this that's his estate. Now, how you get people here to say yes to receiving a video is still up to you. You can do cold email, it's it's very similar. It's just cold calling. One man guy, again, it comes down to cold calling will get the number of people who are interested in your video a lot faster. And then when you send it the same day, it lets you put a bit more focus in their minds, right? They talk to you this morning, this afternoon, they're seeing your video in the evening. They're talking back up to you following up. If they, if they see the video in the afternoon, afternoon, I'll call back. I'll call them back in the evening. If they see the video tomorrow morning, I'll call them back to, tomorrow morning. If they see the video, today at night late, I'll call them back tomorrow morning, right? So the whole time between the time they hear me and to the time they have to close, they know me. It's not a lot more like, like, like you know, um, time off, right? That's the, that's the difference. With cold email, things can be broadened out, you know, follow them up back and stuff like that. Obviously it works, but this is a, a lot more focus and you're brute forcing number of people are calling and getting through and putting in your calendar who to call back and 
it's basically like being in front of them a lot more, right? You saw my video, you saw my thing, this is what I do, this is what I did. Yes or no, like this is like make a decision now, all right? And then move on. If it doesn't work, move on. You're already moving on. Whether they're um, seeing it or not, you're already going through the calls. Like one mindset tip I can give about this is one thing I realized when I was really doing this well is even the day I got a client, I went back and did my calls. So understand that. That's when I was like really ruthless with the calls and the sales, right? Because normally before that, if I got a sale on that day, I'll be, the day's done. I'm fucking happy as fuck and you know, everything's just a celebration. But one of those times when I was like going hard, I was like, oh shit, I got a sale, but I didn't finish my number of calls. At that time I was doing three pages in Home Advisor. I did like, I think the first page or something like that. And then I got a sale because I did a proposal from the day before or something like that. I went back and did my calls for the day. So I really pushed to get the number of dials in. All right. Um, okay. Next video, please. Okay. Now I'm coming down to where, um, where you guys wanted the next video. So, all right, guys, I'll leave that here. 20 minute video, like a quick Q and a, um, and then, let me see if I want to do it today with a long proposal, but I think you guys are going to have more benefit. Um, first of all, to showing the organization, right? Like things like what I look for when I'm calling and stuff like that. And, um, yeah. All right, guys. Peace.